Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, another edition of Fridays with Steve. Uh, thanks for joining us, whether it's uh, live and in real time uh, or uh, after the fact, we appreciate uh, you joining us. Trying to bring a, a little bit of uh, education, a little bit of information, a little bit of levity uh, into our, our world. And, and today uh, we're revisiting a subject, but we're doing it in a new way. Um, talking about conference rooms, talking about that meeting space, that hybrid experience, um, and doing it with our friends at, at Logitech. And so um, let's get right into it. I want to um, just kind of set the stage. Um, I'm just going to talk for a couple of minutes. Um, I'm the least interesting uh, part of this uh, episode today. And so just want to uh, talk uh, some basics uh, just make sure we're all on the same page. And then I'll bring in my special guest. Um, and we're going to talk uh, specifically about Logitech, um, their product line, uh, some of the innovation that they're bringing to the table, um, our great partnership with them, um, and really talk to an expert around, you know, assessing your needs, thinking about, um, you know, mapping features and functions into the things that are really going to drive the business outcomes uh, that you're looking for, uh, maybe a couple of hints at some of the fun stuff that they're working on or, or, or showing some of the great things that, that are in the product. Teams is, a, is an interesting beast and especially an interesting beast in this space in that there's this, this marriage of, of uh, software, of hardware, of uh, workflows and, 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 and business process and all of these things work together to bring the whole solution um, and, and sort of light it up, right? Um, it's uh, awesome for us here at Apex and, and our role um, that we play with customers that uh, we're able to bring all of this to bear. Um, we sort of uh, spackle over it with our expertise and our experience, all the um, the hundreds of customers and hundreds of projects that we've done um, to bring all these things together for you um, because there is so much innovation right across this whole spectrum uh, that you see uh, the individual companies at the hardware, firmware, and even the software layer down there are innovating at a rapid, rapid speed. Um, Microsoft's doing the same you know, sort of at the heart of the solution with Teams. Um, there is a, a lot that's built into the platform, uh, as well as taking advantage of both sort of the standard as well as the, as well as the advanced capability within the hardware. Like always having a baseline, right? That team certification guaranteeing that, that certain things are going to work as designed, that they're going to work well, that they're supportable, um, that they're interoperable, uh, but at the same time, giving uh, uh, partners like Logitech the ability to go innovate. Um, and it's really, really a cool um, scenario. It's sort of a, the, uh, the best possible outcome of this non-vertically integrated supply chain that we have with teams, right? You're really giving people the flexibility at every level, including us at sort of that last mile level with you as the customer to do some really cool innovations, right? Workflow, business outcomes, design, architecture, governance, um, and be able to map that onto a stack um, that is just overflowing um, with innovation. And, and our friends at Logitech today are, are going to uh, talk a bit about uh, what they're working on and, and, and some of the differentiators that they see in the space. And so, you know, we talked about this a lot on, on previous episodes, and I'm sure many of you are super familiar, you know, with this ecosystem, uh, really bringing the best of innovation to bear across um, all the devices, all the experiences. And then, you know, even within those experiences, having different kinds of innovation uh, that really fit um, the mode Logitech is is one of the great partners we partner with in these spaces. We have other partners that we work with, you know, fulfilling the right outcomes for each and every customer. Um, but like I said, the experience being relatively the same 
or being guaranteed a base level of experience that all of us then can add on top of. We're really going to be focused on sort of the right side, up to me, the right side of this slide um, that, that talks about room experiences, voice and video, um, and all of the, uh, the magic that happens within that hybrid meeting experience. We also work with a ton of customers sort of on the left side, right? Um, bringing, you know, voice and calling experiences to the desktop. Um, I always joke that um, I'm no longer in the business context giving out my mobile phone number. It's not just because I'm mean, although some might argue, um, but it's because I can give you my team's number. And frankly, that you're better off with that. If I'm sitting at my, my desk in my home office here in Minnesota, um, whether I'm in our home office in Southfield, Michigan, or whether I'm mobile and just uh, have my iPhone in my pocket, if you call uh, that one number in Teams, you're going you're gonna to find me, right? Won't always guarantee I'll answer, but you will find me. Um, and having this capability um, is just one example of, of how the, the team sort of unified experience um, really brings uh, uh, upscale collaboration and, and communication um, to all the customers that we work with. Well, that's all I wanted to clear before I went ahead and brought in Andrew Mayer. Andrew um, is an engineer um, and a thought leader over at Logitech. Uh, and I'm just, I'm super excited to have him join us um, and uh, welcome. Hey, it's great to be here. I, uh, it's, you know, I've, I've seen these before. I've jumped onto your little webinars before. It's nice to be part of them now. Awesome. So, so I just thought I'd kick us off um, here at Apex, we, we have this little saying, lead with Logi, right? One of the things that we've done to scale. We like area. that. Yeah, well, that's a good, that's <laughs> I, a good way I, to I knew you would. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the things that we've done to scale our business is try and standardize and, um, you know, for the, the non-custom room that fits an archetype, it's a huddle room, it's a small room. How do we really accelerate deployment and accelerate adoption? That said, um, I know some of our reasons, but I'd love to ask you, you know, what would you say are, are, are a couple of the key differentiators in your product line, in your innovation, in your software um, that you feel like give you, give you some differentiation in the market? I think, first of all, I think you uh, today, I want to make sure, sure everyone's clear. We are going to stay to the left slide of your last slide where we are going to stay in the video conferencing world. But but Logitech is known and it, on that right side. So don't forget us definitely on that right side. We have uh, high quality webcams, headsets, personal devices of all kind. And in our management tool, we can manage all of them within one cloud tool. We can talk a little bit about that later. So, but that management tool is one thing. But, but here's why. Here's the priorities that um, the uh, for for any kind of collaboration that we lead lead with. And um, it's something that I teach a lot when I'm talking about room design. But it's also in how we design our 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 solutions themselves. And we we base it on four basic principles. The first one is a consistent experience. You want to have, if you get a Logitech mice, most people know, mouse, most people know they have a very easy to, easy. it's easy to set up and it's easy to use, right? That, well, we, we want to take that a, a similar consistent experience to the, the rooms itself. So if I walk into a huddle room and, or I walk into a large boardroom, I want that experience to be as simple for an end user but it's not just the end user, right? So that consistent experience needs to play along um, through through the end user, through whoever's deploying it, it needs to be simple to deploy and whoever's managing it. And so we have a whole suite of tools called Logitech Sync that can manage our entire platform all the way from mice and keyboards all the way up to our large boardroom. Um, and so those that consistency and um, those ease of use tools that we provide. And we, and those are our two main priorities. So when we build a new product, we are, we are going to do it to enhance or lean into something that's already expected, a, a consistent experience that you can see. We're just going to 
try to tweak it or make it better if, it, if we have a new product. But, but we lead with that in, at, at first. Then after those two, ease of use and consistency are met, then we can start looking at high quality audio and high quality video. And what's funny is we typically de demo in reverse. We typically show you the cool video things we can do, which is the least important of the four, because you can't, you can still have a meeting if you have audio, but if you lose audio and you have video, you have the best video in the world, but if you lose audio, it's gone, right? So, so video is what we usually demo first, then we'll talk about our audio, and then likely we'll talk about workflow and consistency and how, how that works in the room and all that stuff. And that's just because we're showmen and we like to show the flashy things first. But when we design, it's, it's, the, it's the correct way. And when we, when we build rooms. And so everything you'll see and we'll talk about today will fall into one of those categories to be consistency, ease of use, high quality audio, and high quality video. Awesome. Yeah, I, I know for us as well, when we talk to customers about this, there's always the showy side and then there's always the, you know, hey, it's going to work, right? It's going to work for your end users. And, and, and yeah, I've got a performing background. I love to do the show side, but right. I also have an engineer head and I have to do the, 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 the correct way too. Yeah. So one of the things I mentioned is that um, whether it's devices from, from Logitech or others, you know, in this team's ecosystem, there's sort of that base level guarantee. But at the same time, you are freed up as a partner, a partner to Microsoft, a partner to us to do some cool innovation. And so I think that's one of the things that kind of, you know, sets each vendor, each partner apart. So I'd love to have you talk about some of the things that, that you feel like are, are, hey, you know, make sure you know that, that, that we're innovating independent of wherever teams might happen to be. Sure. I, now I have, I, I'm just sharing some slides if we could get them pulled up. Um, and it's going to, I'm not going to, go into a deep amount of slides. But what I want to show you is our entire ecosystem. And so this is this is a Logitech solution. Now, a few years ago, you might have been familiar with the Logitech ecosystem. It looked something like this. It was it was it grew out of our our, our DNA, which is USB-based peripherals. Everyone knows this is mice, keyboard, webcams, headsets, USB-based peripherals. We took that and brought that into it and we Lean heavy into that using the the early in the early Teams rooms where Teams was um, Teams was only a, a Windows based PC. We needed to provide a controller of some sort, and then we provided a great camera, mic, and speaker system. Now, everything you see on here is still very much part of our portfolio, but we've grown beyond it. So the the meetup, by the way, the small room solution you see on there. Um, brought Logitech up into the world of, uh, of, of collaboration in such a way that it is still the highest selling product in Logitech's history. Yeah. And that little meetup, we're, we're designing and we're, got, we're likely, and I can't make any kind of announcement, I can't talk about it. You're gonna see some, some, some new things within that realm, probably around Infocom, which I wish I could talk about. I, I don't want to lose my job. I love my job. So we'll, 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 we'll keep that around. But just to tease you around Infocom, you're going to see something in that space come, come up, some new, new things. But, but this, this uh, and all these products are still very much available. But we, what we did is we, we looked at the whole ecosystem and said, how can we innovate in multiple places? So one of the first ways, obviously, we talked a little bit about the tap controller. I mentioned it before. That's a, that is a key part of any Teams room, a, a graphic user interface that is intuitive for people to use. And so we have a tap, a controller, and we have multiple ways to deploy that. We have a USB-based version, and we have a network-based version. So I'm not going to spend too much time on there. But that is important to, to know. And then we have... Um, a scheduler running the team scheduling panel. I mean, this is one of those huge user experiences that before you have it, you don't really realize how much you need it until you start deploying them. And right now, I said the meetup was the biggest selling product in, in Logitech history. But if you look at the biggest selling project in the product in the last year, it's the scheduler. And it's because even if they don't have Logitech in that room, 
once they know they can put that scheduler outside the room and someone can walk up, see if the room's available and they don't have to go back to their desk to go, well, I got to pull up the Longhorn room on my Outlook, which was what we used to do, or pull up my laptop or pull up, pull up my mo mobile phone. I can go right onto that scheduler and, and book it and walk in the room and use it. And it turns purple because it's a team's room. Now everyone knows my room. I, you know, it's, it's like when I was a kid with my, uh, when, with my brothers, I always had to put my hat on the chair that I was saving, right? This is well beyond putting your hat on a chair. Yeah. First off, shout out to you for the reference to the Longhorn file system circa 2004. I appreciate that. It makes me feel a little old, but um, uh, brought a smile to my face. Uh, and I just want to echo what you said, right? We've got um, our office in Southfield, Michigan. Uh, we use as kind of a demo showcase for a lot of this stuff. Lots of, lots of gear in the office. Uh, about uh, three months ago or so, we added our first scheduler to our main training room. It's all people want to talk about. They're like, okay, this is the coolest thing ever. Um, you know, red, green, open or booked. Um, yep. You know, intuitive well, teams, interface. Green yeah. or purple? Yep. Oh, thank you. Um, and <laughs> you gotta, and, you gotta, gotta lean into purple with teams. You've got to. <laughs> um, and and it really is. Uh, it really is a conversation piece. And it just to me, like you're like you're saying, it illustrates this is a solution, right? This is an outcome, you know, that is actually more than the sum of its parts. And I, I really love this approach that you guys are taking more sort of experiential, hey, this is what a room needs to feel like and be usable and all those kinds of things. You talked about, you know, the scheduler and the controller, um, but I want to bring you back. Uh, you mentioned like audio is the biggest piece, right? Yeah. Um, and maybe just uh, talk for a couple of minutes about what you guys are doing with the audio experience, because, uh, like you said, video can come and go, uh, you can have a bad hair day and you turn off uh, the video. There's no turning off audio. Yeah. You're not having a meeting if you do. So, so yeah, let's talk about audio, audio fall. Well, first of all, we build high quality, um, mics and we build them into our solutions and, and, and that's the start. But beyond what the mic will do, the high quality mic, the, the, the algorithms and software we put behind that are what really make the difference. And that's, that falls in a bank of technologies we call right sense technologies. And these are the technologies you're, you're very familiar with us and some, someone else. Things like uh, um, our right sense te technologies automatically adjust light in the room. But the one we're talking about is audio okay so i could have a really good mic in a room and that might actually be a problem if i don't have the ability to do something with that mic or enhance it with some software and then here's what i mean if i have the best mic in the room and i've got a recording studio and i had um I, I i would i would soundproof that studio i would make sure there's no other, so i can pick up every nuance of my voice right that doesn't carry over to a video conferencing room very often, if ever. And, and the reason is, is if I put that high quality microphone in that room and it's got an air handler or it's got someone typing on a keyboard or someone's eating some potato chips or just the, the normal things that are going on. And most rooms are not soundproof to a degree that a studio is. So even though they're serviceable in the sense, that, and, and, and that's actually why I haven't done anything to my room on purpose. I could, as in this room, this, my closet over here is fully soundproof because I do some, I, I wrote a book and I, I do some sound recording and some other things in there. But out here, this has got to work like a normal space. So it's got to be usable. It's got to be normal. And so what we're doing with our audio is we're cutting out all that background noise. We have an AI algorithm running in the background that says, hey, that's not human speech. I'm going to pull that down while I'm going to take that human speech and bring it up. And so whether you're a loud talker, it, it likely is taking me down because I'm one of those people that you get in a room and you're like, whoa, his voice is loud. So it's, it's mixing me to a, a, a reasonable level. But it's also taking someone who's a soft talker and bringing them up and normalizing that, that audio. So all that should be going on in the background. And here's the thing, any of these right sense technologies for the most part, I'm gonna talk about another one here in a minute, should drop away to the background. 
if we're doing our job right, you shouldn't notice the, the, the uh, automatic light adjustment. It should just happen. You walk in the room, it may be overcast outside, and you've got windows out, out, out back. You shouldn't notice it because it should just adjust and make sense. So we are, when we build these technologies, so same thing with audio. When we build these technologies, I shouldn't notice it because I don't walk into a room. Well, I do because I'm an engineer. I love walking in and paying attention to all the little cool technical things. I have a hard time going to a, a concert or a movie because I'm like counting the number of lights and number of microphones and stuff like that. But that's not a normal person. Normal people walk in the room. They're in there to have a meeting. And they're in there to have a meeting, and they, if you ask them about the technology, they should say, no, everything worked great. That's about as much as they should notice their technology. If, if it goes too much one way or too much the other, we've not done our job right. And so that's, that's kind of what, what we would be talking about with, uh, with audio. With that, though, I think we need to talk about the overall experience of the room, because we've got automatic light, we've got automatic sound adjustment, and then... We need to bring in the idea that, in fact, I used to save years ago, would save my seat in a meeting by putting the remote control down next to my seat because it was intimidating. No one wanted to pick up a remote control. I was no, had no problem with it, right? So I'd put that remote control down. But that, that little bit of user interface, what I thought was easy, other people find intimidating, kept people from adopting and utilizing video conferencing until we got things like teams come in, kept coming in and teams, teams really stepped up the user experience. And one of the things we added to it, and it's actually a requirement to be a certified uh, camera solution within a teams is that we have some sort of automated camera control. And I'm gonna show, show you in three different modes. There's three different uh, things we're doing with that. Now, the first two are normal. You're gonna be very, you're gonna see these as being, hey, we know this, but I'm gonna show them to you just to lay the context of, of that. Now, I'm a huge Elvis fan. So I just brought my Elvis, Elvis out and Elvis, um, as I'm in the room, it's automatically adjusting because I, I and, and you notice how smooth that transition was. It, was. it was something that if I wasn't pointing out, you would notice, but it wouldn't be that big of a deal. It, it, you'd move it, Elvis walked in the room, and then he'll leave the building in a minute, right? But, um, and uh, so Elvis is here. It's going to frame us both in the shot. This is what's called group view. And that group view is an important feature in probably 70% of rooms. Most rooms, you don't want much more than this. There's a lot of cool things else we can do, but most rooms are five to eight people. You're going to frame them all in and you're just going to have your meeting. And if someone gets up and leaves, it's going to reframe to whoever's in that room, right? So, so that, that's an important feature. So the speaker view option is, is the next view. Now I'm going to switch it and it does take a second for my rally bar to decide to, to actually switch over to speaker view. But once it switches over to speaker view, it moves pretty fast. And then it's going to say, hey, Andrew's talking. I don't necessarily need to focus on both Elvis and Andrew. I'm going to focus in on Andrew. And you notice it also came up with a picture in picture here. That way, if Elvis did decide to move, you would want to know that because that's a big deal because he's dead. Um, mm -hmm. And so if Elvis would did decide to, to pick up, you don't want to lose that context of the rest of the room, but you, I'm talking, so I'm the one. Now, these are the two technologies that has got us through many years of video conferencing and very, very comfortable. Then we had the pandemic. The pandemic brought a new expectation from users. This is good, but expectation, ex, uh, the expectation of users started to go, hey, as people go back in the office, I don't wanna see one person talking at a time. I've got five people around the table. I'd really like to see them in their own, uh, or four people at the table or whatever, uh, in their own box. And so recently we deployed, and this is still in beta, and I'll explain why it's in beta here in a minute, uh, a new technology called GridView. GridView kind of takes that, and now Elvis has his own, own um, square and I have my own square. We're doing it within the, the video stream, the same video stream, and we can do up to four right now. Eventually, Microsoft will open up the ability to actually give individual streams to all the different people we have, and we're gonna probably stick with four to six it went once they do that, but at the moment, it's all within the same video stream. So you're seeing that 
we're just breaking up the video stream to give us our own our own box right now. But that's going to change when Microsoft makes that change and we'll be able to give more, more videos. Now here's some problems with QuickView. It looks pretty cool in a very cool uh, closed environment like I have, but let's say we're all sitting around a table and, uh, and I'm sitting a little closer to Elvis. Uh, now you see what's going on. I'm in his, I've got my own, it sees to frame me up, but I'm halfway in, in his thing. So it, the experience is a little weird because the angles, we don't have a different angle to, to do it, to give it, to, to, so we are designing and releasing a new product that will be an add-on to our rally bar, which is what you see on. And by the way, the rally bar is our kind of workhorse. That's this kind of standard um, system you're seeing. And, and I know many of your, uh, your audience already know about that. But let's, 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 take, let's take apart the rally bar briefly before I talk about the, the, next, the next piece so that we can understand the technologies going on here. What is going on is I've got a main camera and I've got a secondary camera right over here called the AI viewfinder. So, but these are both at the front of the room. These two camera systems work in conjunction with the six beam forming microphones to identify that I'm someone, I'm a human, and that the audio is coming from my direction so I can zoom in on me. That's a key piece to understand as we move into what, what um, what grid view is? I'm gonna. I did this live. These are slides that that um, I, I would use if I wasn't doing a demo. But but Logitech Site was announced in October. This you're gonna say, oh, this looks like one of the 360 degree cameras that are out on the market or have been on the market. Yeah, yeah. I don't say I don't say competitors' names, but um, but there is a, a restaurant that has a similar name too. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, the Logitech Site. Uh, is not the same as as those competitors. It you mean is not it's actually three. it's actually team certified, supportable, and secure. It will be. It's not out yet. It's not going to be delivered until July. But yep. yes, it will be certified when it comes out, and that's that. Well, that's the full intent. Here's what it will do. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the problem. That problem of giving everyone their own thing. And I'm going to skip through a lot of this because I've already shown you some of this. But let's actually show you a, mo a mock-up of what the intent is. Now, what the site is, is, is not a stitched camera experience. It's not giving you a 360-degree camera experience. What it is doing is giving you two extra camera angles out at the table so that I can get, instead of being crossed here, there's another camera angle that can pick me up and frame me in, in better and differently, right? And so... Um, so this is going to play for just a second. I'm not going to play the whole video. This is just a kind of a marketing video, but it's going to show you the idea of it. So you'll notice there's one camera on one side and then the other camera is on the other side of it. They, those, they're 180 degree field of view cameras and they overlap, giving you up to a 315 degree possible field of view. Now watch what happens. Look at the guy on the right. He's looking across the table right now. And then he looks uh, across, across. Now, when he turns to look at the front of the room, watch what happens. It, it switches and says, oh, the front of the room sees him better and it gives him a new perspective. Wow. Then he looks back and it switches back. And, he, and it's able to give a tighter view of him and actually frame him in directly because it's got multiple camera angles to pull that from. And, and so that's the idea. It's, to, it's not to stitch camera because one of the things we looked at camera stitching and we decided against it because camera stitching kind of ruins your perspective of what goes on in the room. It warps the table, it warps the, the, everything in there, and it really is kind of an unnerving experience. And so we decided, uh-uh, we can do that same, a better experience with two, the, the two cameras with AI. And so it's, it's, it's basically, it's got an embedded cam a microphone. So if, you know, it should, you shouldn't even need to add an additional microphone. And if you do, there is the ability to add one if you want one. Um, but in, in most cases, you're not going to need, need one. Um, this is the field of view. Now, this looks like it's going to do a hot pull three, 315 degree field of view. But this is a potential field of view. Again, I, as I mentioned before, it's got two 180 degree cameras that overlap. And so what they're going to do is kind of what I showed in the video. They're going to find the best view, whether it's from the, the camera at the table or the camera at the front, depending on where you're looking and, and, the, and, and your reference. 
In a, in a 360 degree camera, it's interesting. If I was talking to someone across the table on a rally bar, you're gonna see my ear. But in the, with the sight, it's gonna switch and then look at me. But in a 360 nice. degree camera, now the, the camera's there, when I'm talking across the table, now you're gonna see me square on, but the, the, if I turn if I turn and reference the people on the far side, now they're gonna see my ear. Cause, so we're, we're solving for both issues, right? So very important. So this is a, a brand new feature. We're, gonna, we're taking advantage of the technology that's already built in our, our systems. And that's why grid view is beta right now, but when site gets released, it'll move into the GA. And what's going on is we are actively working in fact, we've got sites going out in a beta, beta test to different customers right now. The reason for that is, is we're tuning the AI because what we, the production rules that we use are important. So it's an extra long beta time. Normally, it's about six weeks. This is going to be several months. But we're using those analytics to tune that AI. So back to what I said before, if we eventually, if we do our job right, you should hardly notice this technology. You, it should be, it should just fall to the background and you just have your meeting. No, that's awesome. And, and uh, you, we were joking uh, about some of the, the competitors in this space and some of the disadvantages. At the same time, I know we've gotten a lot of feedback from customers that there are just still those situations where that middle of the room camera experience is something they're looking for so the fact that, that that you guys are addressing that even if it's you know even if it's a couple months away um is is super super powerful so hey i know we're we're getting short on time um definitely have to have you back especially now um uh, once elvis was in the picture i saw you've got a scribe at home uh um, i do and i definitely want to have you back to talk about that just like the scheduler that scribe, that digital whiteboard without the Surface Hub 2 price uh, is certainly something that is super compelling. Yeah, we should come back. We should talk about scribe and switch. Two things that can enhance a, a, what you're doing in those, those rooms significantly. Um, and then we could, we could get into, we could geek out about our management tools. We can get, talk about personal devices. We probably have several meetings we could get together to do. So, well, I'll take as much of your time as you're willing to give, um, Andrew. Uh, this has been amazing. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, uh, on My the show pleasure. Today. I'm honored that you asked. So awesome. Thanks, bud. Uh, I'll just wrap it up real quick, right? We stayed focused on the content. Um, I, I hope you found it uh, informative and as useful as as, as I did. Uh, Logitech is a great partner. Um, we are, uh, you know, blessed to work with, with great partners in the industry, Microsoft, Logitech, just being a couple of them, um, and really bringing those solutions to bear for all of you. You've all heard it before. Um, great history here at Apex. Love to work with you, um, new customers, old customers, you know, give us a shout out. Um, if you're an existing customer, reach out to your account exec, um, reach out directly to me. I'm happy to talk to anyone, provide slide, provide contact and, and, and um, further information. Um, check out our website. Um, if you're in uh, the Michigan area, like I said to Andrew, uh, we use our office not just for getting our work done, but for really showcasing uh, a lot of this technology. Um, everything he showed, uh, we have instances of in our, uh, in our office and in our environment. And just in the last uh, week and a half or so, we've had three different customers um, come through in a very sort of prescriptive, guided way. Hey, let's get hands on with this stuff. Let's experience it. Because that's half the fun, um, is really getting a chance to see this stuff in action. So with that, we're a couple minutes over. I appreciate the little bit of extra time. Andrew Mayer, thank you so much. Thank you so much to Logitech for all your support and partnership. Uh, and with that, we'll see you next time. Thanks again.